Jesus and use Chris to do that. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody says amen, amen. and amen. What's up, OB? Yeah. Good to be with you today. Uh, can we just give it up for Pastor Julian? You guys have an amazing, amazing pastor. Uh, pastor, thank you so much for uh, trusting me with the, with the word today. Hey, have you ever had a day like this, you're, you're going throughout your day and you start thinking of your family, you think of how awesome they are, and you're like, man, I'm just going to go home and bless my family, I'm going to speak into them, we're going to have fun, and as the day goes on, you're just thinking about getting home, and, and you want to do great things with them, and then you get home, and you actually lash out in anger at them, or you say something that you shouldn't, you're like, man, that was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. What is wrong with me? Or, or how about this? There's a, uh, it's going to be different this time. I messed up. I, I, this is a sensitive topic to, to both of us. We, we've gotten into a fight before, but we're going to handle it better, and then you fight again. Anybody? Is it just me? Okay, thank you. There's one person in the room. Um, or, man, I, I messed up really badly at work, and it's really affected me and others. I'm not going to let it happen again. Guess what? It happens again, right? Or maybe it's something really big that you just keep messing up in. Ever been there? Of course you have. We all have. Frankly, honestly, on most days, on, on most days we probably feel average at best. And at our worst, we feel like a failure. You know, this battle that goes on within it reminds me of, ver of a very powerful confession that one of Jesus' most dedicated followers admits to. Listen to part of Paul's confession. You can follow along on the screen. You can follow along. I'll pretend that you're not looking at Facebook or Instagram if you have your phone. Or you know what? You could always look at a paper Bible. Wow. So the kids in the room are like, what's a paper Bible, you know? Um, but l let's look at the verses. I know that there is nothing good in my desires controlled by sin. I want to do what is good. How many of you are there? I want to do what is good, but I can't. I don't do the good things I want to do. I keep doing the evil things that I don't want to do. I do what I don't want to do. And then later on, he says, what a terrible failure I am. Who will save me from the sin that brings death to my body? You would think that this is some evil guy. This was one of God's most dedicated people. Man, have you been there? I want to do good. I want to stop lashing out in anger. I want to tell the truth. I, I want to be faithful. I know what I'm supposed to do. I want to turn my life around. But I just keep failing. I keep messing up. I'm doing the exact opposite of what I know to do and want to do. We've all been there. You know, when we ask Jesus to forgive us, he does. Completely. Completely. No doubt about it. That said, until the day we die, there's a war going on inside of us. The desire to do good versus the temptation to do wrong anyways. I want to do good, but then I don't. I want to do good, but then I'm tempted to do wrong. If you don't believe me that this is the way that it works, look at babies. Babies are amazing. They're so cute. They're so cuddly. And then something horrible happens. The terrible twos, right? Some of you just need to hashtag the twos on Facebook. People are going to get it. The terrible twos happen. It's crazy. Their favorite word becomes no. You're like, why did I teach you to speak in the first place? They, toddlers even have dirty four-letter words. Mine. 
right? You're like, how did this innocent baby so quickly turn into the terrible twos? You're going to think I hate toddlers. I don't. But while they're good at times, the internal struggle is there at an early age. And it's up to us as parents. It's our job to raise them in a way to teach them so that they will learn to do what's right. This piece of Paul's confession ends with him saying, what a terrible failure I am. Ever felt that way before? Where you feel like a failure? Some of you are like, every day, (laughs) that's my life. You know what, since we all have this conflict inside of us, I wanna, we need to know how to respond to failure because it's going to happen. Whether it's, whether it's us that have failed others or if others have failed us so that we can overcome. So for our remaining time, I'm going to talk to you about some steps we can take to overcome failure. So Jesus tells this dude named Peter Get this, this is cool. He says to go into deep water and catch some fish. And Peter and his crew, you might not know this, but they, they've been working hard all night to try and catch some fish, but haven't caught anything. And then Jesus comes along and says, hey, go into deep water and catch some fish. It's like, are you serious, Jesus? We, just, we were just trying to go catch some fish and we didn't catch any. We failed. But what would Peter's response to Jesus be? He actually says, some of you need to hear this. We haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will. I'll do what you say. You know, here's the interesting thing about the story. Peter was an expert at fishing. He was a fisherman. He could have let his pride get in the way. And and speaking of pride, the Bible lovingly warns us that pride comes before what? A fall. Ah, Jesus, (laughs) these are my strengths. And I I have a lot of experience in this area. So I don't know if it would be a good idea to do it again. At least not right now. Thanks for coming to town, though. I'm going to go to bed. Um, I already tried this, and I worked really hard on it. It didn't produce what I wanted it to. Nah, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to feel like I'm wasting my time, Jesus. It's not a good idea. This was Peter's trade. He knew what he was doing and had worked hard all night. Jesus was just a carpenter. What did he know? Right? He wasn't a fisherman. If Peter, get this, if Peter would have let his pride get in the way, he would have never cast the net. Let's see what happens once they did what Jesus told them to do. It's in Luke 5. When they had done so, they had caught a large number of fish. There was so many that their nets began to break. So they motioned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. You know, number, if you're taking notes, number one, the, the number one way that you can overcome failure is this. Instead of letting failure ruin me, let it refine me. I'll say that again. If, instead of letting failure ruin me, let it refine me. How do we let failure refine us? Simple. Stay humble. Stay humble. Be teachable when you fail. Let a trusted few speak into your life. And most importantly, follow what Jesus says. Can you imagine going from catching nothing to two boats sinking? It happened simply because Peter listened to Jesus. They didn't try harder. They didn't need to get the new state-of-the-art fishing equipment for the OB pier. They, They didn't need any of that stuff. Let me ask a question to your spirit this morning. Is there any situation in your life right now that would go better if you would just simply let failure refine you? instead of ruin you. 
my family and I keep trying to make it work, but we're still disconnected. But because you're asking us to try again, we will. My kid and I are still at odds after many attempts and this, the terrible twos went into the terrible teens or, you know, wherever, wherever they're at, right? And, and, but because you asked me to take a step towards my kid, I will. I did something that I shouldn't, but you want me to chase after good anyways, so I will. I took a step of faith, and it blew up in my face, and, and, and I was embarrassed, and you're asking me to take another step? I will. I took a risk but failed, and you're asking me to take a risk again? I will. You see, you want to overcome failure? Let it refine you. Have you ever been betrayed by someone? Raise the hands. You're breathing in this room, okay? We've all been betrayed by someone, right? Even little offenses over time can add up if not addressed properly. And when it happens, I'm sure there's a lot of questions that you ask. Man, will I, will I be able to come back from this? Will I, will I ever be able to trust again? Man, I love this person, but I, I keep getting hurt by them. Will they ever change? You know, sometimes people fail us, and it's definitely hard to overcome. Listen into a challenge that Jesus shared with some of his friends to help them and us overcome. It says this, even if it's personal against you and repeated seven times, seven times through the day and seven times. If you have that paper Bible, circle seven times, right? And seven times, he says, in a day, not in a year, in a day, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, forgive him. The apostles came up and said to the master, they were just so shocked, give us more faith. Number two, if you're going to be someone that overcomes failure, number two, simply let it go. Let it go. Even if it's personal against you, if they say sorry, forgive. This is why forgiveness is hard. It's personal. It hurts. You're wounded. You're affected by the actions of another. And I love that the Bible's real. It shares the personal part. It doesn't sweep it under the carpet. Hey, who cares about your feelings? Just forgive anyways. Even if it's personal. Even when it hurts. Forgive, because I've forgiven you. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean that you minimize how this affects you personally. It's okay. No biggie. It didn't really affect me, even though I've been crying for six weeks now. I, I, I forgive you. No, it's okay to say, you hurt me. This really affected me. This was a big deal to me but I choose to forgive you anyways. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you shouldn't have boundaries either. Boundaries can be very healthy, especially if you're in a dangerous situation. And for those that struggle with this tension between forgiveness and boundaries, hopefully this verse is helpful. It says this in Proverbs, a prudent person force foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. See, you need to be able to have space to discern if someone has truly changed or not. You can forgive someone if they haven't changed. I would encourage you to do so. That said, you still need to take precaution. If they haven't changed, boundaries need to be there. And even if they are changing, you have to take it one step at a time. And as you see change happen and trust start to be built up again, you may be able to start removing some boundaries. So don't think you can't have boundaries just to be able to let it go. 
Jesus was so radical in his belief about this thing called forgiveness that he says, not seven, talk about a bad day if someone screws you over seven times, right? Talk about a really, really bad day. He doesn't say seven times in a lifetime. He doesn't say seven times in a year. Seven times a day. You're like, well, what about the eighth, <laughs> right? You're like, uh, that's not what he even means. The, the statement was his radical way of saying that our life needs to be one that continues to choose forgiveness. Continues. Jesus' friend's response to this radical thought process was, oh man, increase our faith. They must have known that this type of radical forgiveness was going to be hard. But instead of saying, you know what, this is a hard teaching of Jesus right now. Let's go. I like the blessing stuff. And when he forgives us, we'll just sweep this, you know, we'll ignore this one. They said, increase my faith so that it would be possible. I realize that forgiving others is is tough. I've been there several times myself, but it's possible and he can help. And can I say, I don't pretend to fully understand how someone goes from struggling to forgive to actually forgive, but I do know that he can help change our hearts. Jesus can give us the power to help us forgive. He can change our perspective. Not only that, he gives us practical things that we can do that can help change our hearts. Listen into this in Luke. It says this, Bless those who call down curses on you and pray for those who treat you badly. Oh man, Jesus, do I have to? I don't want to pray for them. I want to punch them in the face. That's what I want to do. I don't want to pray for them. I want to gossip about them too. Come on now. I'm going to bless and pray for others when they treat me badly. You know what Jesus is doing here? He's calling the best out of us in the worst of situations. Some of you might want to write that down. Jesus is calling the best out of me in the worst of situations. Again, I don't pretend to fully understand how someone gets to forgiveness, but if you're praying for them, I bet that goes a long way towards helping you get there. And you know, forgiveness has some great benefits for you as well. One benefit is for you, for you is that the situation and person doesn't have control over you anymore. Another benefit is that it doesn't have to be a burden for you anymore. Why? Because you've let it go. I need a volunteer. Woo! You guys are awesome. Just all of you are flooding up. I, I just need a strong person volunteer. Yes! Woohoo! Okay, come on the stage here. What's your name? Alan. Alan, nice to meet you. Thank you for being our volunteer. You want to just hold this here? Why don't we come over here? Everybody can see you so you're not blocked by this. Just hold this out like this. Right, And you're just going to keep holding it out like that. Alan's going along, having a great day. And then, you know, and just you have to hold it. I mean, you work out, bro? Not lately. Okay, so you're, you're going to get a workout today. So uh, just warning you now. Um, so, so Alan's going about his day, and this, all of a sudden, man, someone gossips about Alan, says some things that, remember, ah, you bent down a little bit. Keep it up there, Alan. Come on. We're not going to let any of this go when people treat us badly. They, they, they gossip about him, and man, he's really discouraged about it. He's like, there goes my raise, probably, because someone said something about me. Then someone, you know, you get on any of the thes, right? The eight, the five, the 805, you almost lose Jesus in the process at those times. So someone cuts him off in traffic, and you know, keep it straight, Alan. Come on, no cheating here, okay? <laughs> and then, then the worst part of it, his family member, I mean, this, this is a little heavy. I'm just warning you now, okay? No shaking. You're shaking too much, Alan, okay? You, you come along, and, 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 and like the, someone in his family like, just starts, uh, 
And then, and then Alan, is just try to keep going here I if you can. You okay. And then, and then Jesus comes along. Alan, you look so burdened and tired by life. Bro, just let it go. Sure. Sure, he says, sure, of course. I. Hey, give it up for Alan, please. Alan's not coming to second service. <laughs> Guys, you see what happens when we don't forgive? And then there's times where we wonder, why am I so tired? Why am I so burdened by people? Jesus calls me to love people, and I, I'm just frustrated by people. And Jesus is coming along, knocking on the door of your heart and to say, it's time to let it go. You've held on to this for too long. Now, I don't know if you're taking notes or if you need to get out your phone, but I'm sure there's someone right now that God's laying on your heart. And I just want you to either write or type these, these words into your phone, whichever you have. And it says, I choose to forgive. And then you fill in the blank. Because, guys, it's time to let it go. The burden's too heavy. Life's too tough without the burdens. The journey's too long with, without needing the extra weight. Because you want to overcome failure when people fail you. Let it go. Sometimes failure may even affect us this way. I failed. I need to step away from God. I keep failing. Maybe God is starting to fail me because I'm failing. Actually, maybe it's him. Maybe his principles don't work. Maybe his promises can't be relied upon. Maybe there is no God. My life is crappy anyways. Isn't my life supposed to be better with Jesus in it? Do you see the dangerous progression? You see, I think that failure and the harder teachings of Jesus can get people to start stepping away. One day when Jesus was teaching some people and many of his followers said about his teaching, man, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept this? Who can accept this? Let's listen in to see how they would respond to this thought of who can accept this. It says this in John 6. From this time on, many of his disciples, notice it didn't say many atheists, many people that don't believe in God, many of his disciples turned back. They no longer followed him. Wow. Many of his followers just stepped away. Again, hear this. They weren't atheists. They were people that believed. They, they were his followers that were stepping away. Jesus then turned to his closest 12 followers and said, Are you going to leave too? And listen to the response. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, who can we go to? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus, where would we go? Where would we go? If you're going to be someone that overcomes failure, number three, instead of stepping away from Jesus, step into Jesus. Instead of stepping away from Jesus, step into Jesus. I've failed. Instead of stepping away, step into Jesus by asking him to forgive you. When someone else has failed you, step into Jesus by asking him to help you let it go. When you're tempted to think that God has possibly failed you, step into Jesus by believing that God doesn't fail people. He doesn't. I promise you he doesn't. I did what I was supposed to do, but this marriage hasn't turned out the way I expected. Maybe God doesn't know what he's talking about. I really tried to follow his principles when it comes to my kids, but it's not working the way I thought. I prayed over my relationships with others, but they're going nowhere. I prayed over the raise or promotion, but it didn't happen. Maybe he doesn't answer 
prayers. I pray, but I still wor worry. I work but hard, but still struggle. Life is just not what I thought it would be. Maybe there's another way besides Jesus. Maybe it's time to step away. Even if you don't understand what he's doing. And I promise you, I've, I've been there. You can ask my wife. We've been there as a family. Even when you don't understand what he's doing, step into him. In the end, he will not fail you. He won't. Because you want to overcome failure? Step into Jesus. We started this message with one of Jesus' most faithful followers as the band starts to come back to the front. And he's admitting that even he wants to do good, but still fails. And we ended that piece of his confession with him essentially saying, man, what a terrible failure I am. Who will save me? Thankfully, his confession didn't end with that question. Listen in. It says this, what a terrible failure I am. Who will save me from the sin that brings death to my body? I give thanks to God who saves me. He saves me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Number four, if you're going to be someone that overcomes failure, let Jesus do his part. Let Jesus do his part. Paul realized that he couldn't do this thing on his own. Even when he wanted to do good, he still ended up failing. Paul got to the end of himself. What a terrible failure I am. But he realized that he could still hang his head high because Jesus does his part. And Paul did just that. He let Jesus do his part. He let Jesus help him do good. How about you? Will you let Jesus do his part in you? See, so many of us try to do this thing on our own, but Paul's a great example of someone who even had the desire to do good, yet still failed. Paul knew that he wasn't the answer, but he also knew that Jesus was. Amen? Amen? Jesus can take someone that fails and turn them into someone who does good with their lives. He can take someone that destroys others with their anger and turn them into someone who encourages. He can take someone that makes a mess of their lives and turns them into someone who lives with purpose. He can take someone that, that just fails over and over and over again and makes a mess out of other people's lives and turns them into people that help others. Guys, here's the reality. We're all going to fail at times. It's not about if we fail or not. It's how we respond when we do. Instead of letting failure ruin you, let it refine you. When someone fails you, learn to let it go. When failure has the best of you, please Step into Jesus instead of stepping away from him. And most importantly, let Jesus do his part. Let's pray. You know, I don't know, I don't pretend to know where you're at today. But God does. And most likely you do too. Maybe for some of you, God's just like, you know what? It's time to let failure stop ruining you. You're, my, you're mine. You don't need to be ruined by this. I can restore this. I can redeem this. For some of you, maybe it's just time to let it go. You've been carrying so much burden lately and Jesus whispers in our ears. He says, hey, all of you who are weary and heavy burden, come to me. 
I'll teach you. I'll give you rest. I'll teach you to learn to let it go. For some of you, maybe even you're just like, I've messed up so badly or I feel God has failed me so much. I, I'm on the brink of stepping away. Can, can I encourage you? Step in. Step in. Maybe just for some of you, you're, you're good with all of those, but it's just time to, you're just at that point of it's like, man, I'm such a terrible failure. It's just time to let Jesus do his part because he is still in the business of changing people. If he wasn't, I wouldn't be up here. This is a waste of time. But he is still in the business of changing people. Do you believe that today? So with heads bowed and eyes closed, before I close this part of our, our service off here in prayer, before we get into our next song, before I close off this part in prayer, can you just take a moment to talk to God? Which point does he want you to reflect on and apply this week? Not waiting. This is not just a message. This is going to transform you. So take a moment and then I'll pray over.